All right, guys. So, as promised, this is the Shark IQ 1001. This is the RV1001, also the RV1001AE. <clears throat> now, if you have a self emptying model, it's going to be a little bit different. Teardown is still about the same. So in this video, we're going to do a complete teardown of this robot, along with troubleshooting it. So this robot, if you turn it on, give it a second to start, I'm going to grab my tools. So this one's given an error number seven, too close to the cliff. Generally, whenever you have an error like this, you take clean these sensors. One of these sensors has failed, obviously. I don't have any replacements for it. So the only thing that we can do is tear it on the robot and see if it's something else. So let's get started. Let's start by first turning it off. So turn it to the off position, remove the dust bin. Make sure y'all are correctly oriented on the screen. Okay, y'all are. Got a couple more tools, all right. <clears throat> so you're gonna need a long shaft, Torx bit set, flat head, and a Phillips head. Those are the tools you'll need. First thing we're gonna do is remove the dustbin like we did. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the battery. Place the battery to the side. Well, battery cover and battery. Make sure y'all can see everything I'm doing perfect. If you have any questions, guys, at any time during the video, pause it, comment your question, and I will get back to you. Next, go ahead and remove the dust, I mean the uh, the brush roller cover. Remove the brush roller. This is the anti-tangle. They're not compatible with any other model. All right, now, you can remove your front wheel by prying it up, but you don't have to. Go ahead and grab your torch bit for the wheels. But first, since we're working on the sensor part, I wanna remove that. And some of these are different. This is gonna be a T8. So a T8, T15. Some of them I believe had a T20. I'm not sure exactly what models, but some of them I do believe did. So we're going to remove the five T8s up front. Make sure you keep all these. You will need them. Oh, not five. Six. One, two, three, four. No, five. Let's count for a second there. This one is broke. Holy cow. This robot obviously had some damage. That one's broke too. That one's not. So this robot hit something very, very hard to snap those off. I wonder if this robot fell. I don't know. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Stick this back together. Make sure these brushes don't fall out. If they do, they just clip back in. thought this was... No, this isn't mine. This is the one that I paid for. One of these I actually bought outright, not broken. This one I bought broken. So this robot was involved in a very hard hit. So I'm wondering if something just got knocked loose. But we won't be able to tell until we take it apart. So the first step, we got to remove these wheels. five on each wheel. Two of them on each wheel will not come all the way out. So now that the wheel is loose, rock it back and forth, slide it out, grab the clip, pull. This wheel doesn't sound very good. Huh. All right. <clears throat> Next wheel. If 
you're wondering how I got one of these for my drill, I just took a screwdriver one and broke the handle off. <clears throat> Gotta remove this one. Careful not to break it. See how that one sounds? Oh, this one sounds fine now. Let's just add a little dirt in it. Alright, now that those are removed, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five. Five more, the same size. One, two, three, four, five. I recommend flipping it over so you can catch all your bolts first. Well, screws. Alright, there's those, and you're going to see a lot of dirt that you didn't think was in it. Alright, now take the case, pop it off. Top comes right off. Here's your motherboard assembly, your main brush roller, your vacuum. So this is the suction motor, the main brush motor and assembly. You have your motherboard right here, camera lens, um... A whole bunch of wires that go to different sensors and things like that. Um, yep, yeah, pretty standard, just like the other ones. I'm trying to see if I see any damage on it. I don't. Very, very interesting. Normally you see a lot of damage, especially from a fall like that. Um, where to begin? Where to begin? So, I guess the first thing we'll do in this video, since we're tearing it completely apart, let's go ahead and take all of the ribbon cables off from the motherboard and remove the motherboard. So, you can just pull them off, or if you need to, you can use a flathead for some leverage. Go ahead and pull them all the way back to their corresponding component. Be careful not to tear any of them, because they are they're pretty tough, but they can be delicate at times. This is the wire set for the wheels. If you need these, I do have these in stock. <laughs> it's crazy. So I repair these and my robot that I actually legitimately got that started this whole thing took a dump on me the other day and I can't fix it. <clears throat> So, I warranty that. Who would have guessed? If I was to fix it, I'd be out money from other robots. So why not just warranty it? I paid for the warranty. Well, I didn't. My grandparents did. But, nevertheless, there's that. There's all those. Now there's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Screws, Phillips head. Go ahead and remove all those. I tell you, these IQ robots, they do have some issues. Um, just like any of the other ones. They have mapping issues. They have noise issues. They have motor issues, wheel issues. But it really depends on what you're using it for. If you're using it on hardwood surface or tile, you probably never have any issues unless you're running over dog crap or water, something like that. All right, now we can pry the motherboard up, straight up, and go ahead and remove this sensor. That's right here. <clears throat> And there you have it. That is the motherboard removed. And looking at the motherboard, I don't see any telltale signs of any damage. Anything going haywire. But you never know. 
So with that being said, this is actually probably where this video is going to quit being torn apart. <clears throat> because I like to keep this part intact. That way when people order parts, I can just take them off one by one. But I will go over everything about, about it with y'all. So, right and left spinner motors. There's three screws, three Phillips head. You have three screws. One here, one here, one here for the suction motor. That'll come out. Then you can get to the roller motor. The roller motor, here's an interesting fact about the roller motor. Is in order to get it out without cutting these wires, you have to remove the suction motor. But if your motor is bad, you can cut those wires and put the new one in on top and just reroute the wire. Just a heads up on that. So obviously you have a ton of sensors. The roller motor, it's just gonna have these two screws come off. You'll see the plate and it's just gonna slide right out. It's super simple. Um just really, you know what, we can go ahead and do it real, really quick. <clears throat> there is a wire on the 1000 series for speed control. That way if it gets clogged up, it will, will let you know that the amperage has gone up and it will shut off. The older ones didn't, and that was one of the major issues with them. All right, so those are out. Now I can remove these. Slide that sideways, push it down, make sure it's the triangle is the correct orientation. Remove the suction motor really quick to show you that process. So three more Phillips heads with a washer on them. Rock it back and forth, it will come out. You can then slide the spinner motor out. That's the brush motor, spinner brush motor. <clears throat> you can open this, check the belt, check for any wear and tear. There's your assembly right there for the suction. Now, you know what, we're this far, let's go ahead and take these out. So, you got one. Two, three, and the side spinners will come out. They do differ from any other model, so know the 750s and 850s and 725s and 700s will not work. So one thing about the 1000 series is that they're not compatible with any other series. If you have a self-emptying one, all those parts are different as well. There you go. All you're left with is a bunch of sensors. Which is kind of crazy to think that this robot is made up 90% of sensors. But that's how the cookie crumbles, right? Alright guys, I appreciate y'all watching and staying with me this long. If this video helped you out, hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And in the description above... I will have, well, the description below, I will have a link to my eBay store for parts on robots like this. Um, so currently I carry the Shark and the Samsung robot parts. I don't have a lot of the Samsung, but I will be getting more hopefully soon.